Welcome to the uh, afternoon sessions of um, Indigo Classes uh, here at the Festival of Games 2013. Um, my name is Eric Bartelson, I'm uh, editor in chief of Control for the trade magazine for uh, the Dutch Games industry. Uh, I'll be your host for this panel. Uh, this panel is um, about the do's and don'ts of job applications, uh, specifically the uh, art side. We have uh, three heavyweights, uh, very distinct and different. Uh, uh, types of uh, play in the games industry. We have uh, Dimmer van der Hout, uh, who has a serious, serious games uh, studio. We do some casual as well, but serious is fine. Jan Bart van Eyck, Guerrilla Games, you know, hardcore entertainment. And Michel Maas uh, from uh, Spiel, hardcore entertainment. That sounds a bit weird. You, you, you know what I mean, <laughs> right? Entertainment games. Are you? Michel Maas, Spiel Games. So, Casual. Each guy is going to give a presentation of about 10 minutes. Uh, after that, uh, some questions. If you have questions, please raise your hand and we'll bring a mic. It's going to be okay. Enjoy. Dim, please take it away. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Dimmer van der Hout. I have a company called Monkey Business and we make a serious game, not so serious, serious games and uh, applications. Um, I used to be an uh, enter interactive animator at Bitmagic. I've been a teacher uh, at games and interaction at the HKU for uh, six years. Three years of them I've been a senior lecturer, which allowed me to uh, set up the curriculum. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me, but I can't hear myself anymore. Uh, and I'm, I'm CEO and creative director at Monkey Business. Um, how did I get here? Uh, I've seen a lot of applications uh, from new students coming to the HKU. They want to, you know, enroll into the program. I've seen a lot of applications at my company who want to do an internship at my company. And some of them are good, most of them are quite bad, and some are just dreadful. And uh, apparently, I, my, I can't keep my mouth shut, so I, I talk to people about this, and they said, "Well, why don't you come over here and show us what you think of it?" So uh, I'd like to say. I might, I might have exaggerated some of the things, or at least taken them out of context. Uh, I, I'm going to show some pictures that actually belong to people. Uh, they, the copyrights are, belong to those people, and I'm sorry if one of those pictures is yours. Um, I think what I like to tell uh, people who apply for an, an internship or a job, uh, there are five steps which I, which I think really help you to uh, do a better application and the first one is a bit lame but it's called self-reflection and just think about who you are and what you do it's about orientation it's about your network it's about about your email that you're actually going to send in your resume your portfolio and uh, last but not least the interview I am going to skip the interview because a lot of the people who apply for an internship never get to the interview so I'm going to focus on the first five parts um, the self-reflection part is all about what do you actually like yourself and what kind of work are you good in. Now that's, that may sound easy, but I've noticed that a lot of people don't know this. Um, and I get people who tell me, well, what do I like? I really like fantasy. And it allows me to escape the boundaries of reality and create everything I want. And then they show me the portfolio and I get stuff like this and this and this. So when people are able to create everything they want, they come up with stuff that I've seen over and over and over again for years now. So what you like and, and what's happening out there, be critical about it. I think um, if this is actually something that the, the company you're going to apply for is looking for. So uh, who's able to offer you a job that is actually dealing with those kind of uh, subjects and that kind of art. So what I'd like to do is always say, so what do you like? And what are you good at? Those are also two things. Some people, um, yeah, I guess that's a self-reflection part. Think they're really good at something, but I think if you look at the actual uh, field of work, there's a, a gap between that. And then if you look at job offers, there's sort of a, a different area that you have to be, you have to com uh, conform to. So this is where the work is, and um, I guess it's about putting those those circles on top of each other. So once you have, the, when you realize what you what you're good at and what you what the jobs are, uh, it comes down to mail. And I get a lot of mail, um, 
And I want to show you one example of something somebody showed me, uh, sent me. It says, I'm a community and social person. I've got a double A, sorry, but that is my fault. First look on the use of serious games and consider myself sharp when it comes to grabbing chances. I'm very interested in translating the client's wish into a creative concept. That really doesn't tell me anything. It's just, if this is the email and it, it, it follows up with I'm good in Photoshop and Illustrator, and then that, that's it. I don't know, I don't know how, how, put, how to put this person to work. Uh, another example of something that I, uh, I got was this. It's in Dutch, I'm sorry for the English speaking people. Uh, I, I guess you have to read it yourself. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm bad in this. Uh, business is not spelled that way. Uh, and the funny thing which I really like about this, it says it's very precise and accurate. And it's just filled with, with and I'm like, really? So, um, once you've got that, make sure that you mail something that, that shows me that what you want to do and what you're good at is relevant to the things that I'm doing. Because I get a lot of emails that say, I really like your website. And I guess you're going to have the same thing, which I really like your game. Sure, I like games, I like to draw, uh, but I, I always like to uh, use the, analog, uh, the, the metaphor of food and cooking. Uh, I see what we do as a kitchen where you have a lot of different disciplines and everybody needs to work like really hard to get stuff done. And sometimes you get this guy who's you know, going to yell at you, it's either it's the client or it's me or somebody else who tells me to really get stuff going. And then I get a job applicant who says, I really like to eat pizza. I, I'm lo I love food and uh, it's not the same thing. Make sure it's relevant, make sure that you understand what we're doing. Um, Besides whether it's good or not, I get people who send me stuff like this. And this is what we do. So I sort of look at the portfolio and go like, I can't even consider this because it's just... So know what the company is doing and uh, how it's relevant for them to hire you, why they would want to do that. So get to know the company, get to know the people who work there and how they work there. I think if you're able to actually communicate uh, in an email, if you can say, hey, I think this is what you need uh, and why you need it and this is how I can add value to your company or your process, um, it, 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 at, at least for me, I will start to pay uh, attention. Now, how do you get to know people um, different ways? The way we usually do it is by drinking beer. Um, this is one of the interns who got hired eventually. Um, and then it comes to portfolio. Um, yeah, this is this is sort of embarrassing. Maybe I'm, I'm, I hope nobody's here uh, who actually send in this stuff. But I got a port I got a picture from somebody who said I want to be a concept artist. And this is an asset, something. Uh, this is a doodle, like how they like to draw. And this is also something. Um, and this is uh, an environment. And I, uh, I don't understand. These are people who are actually in school. So they have teachers who send these people out and say, okay, go have an internship. And I'm like, what? I got, the, last week I got another drawing from a girl who wants to uh, work at our company because we, we draw monsters all day, that's what she thinks. She sends me this, which I think is even better than all the other pictures because it tells a story and it has a clear character and it's technique-wise there's improvement, but I really like this picture. And if I compare it to, you know, the two, I, I really like the right one. The difference is that girl is six years old, and those people are almost done with their education. So, I'm, I don't know, it hurts a little bit. And that's why I guess I, I have to come up and tell stuff. Um, so, the five steps, I think, really look about, look to yourself and the things you're good at and what you want to be good at, you know, what the, what the field of works need. Orientate where you can do that, network with those people, uh, make sure you have an interesting email and a good resume, uh, have a good portfolio, and uh, please don't, because I guess it's about don't, don'ts and do's. Uh, stop showing the same stuff like manga and orcs and fancy and over and over. Uh, even if the company uh, is doing stuff like that, it's interesting to have somebody who goes beyond just that particular scope. So show that you have a broader spectrum of inspiration and techniques you can draw from. Don't be a number. And uh, uh, don't be too casual. I just had a, a guy the other day coming in for a job interview actually. 
who just sat with his headset and uh, his uh, hoodie on for the, the entire interview, which I guess it should be okay, but I don't know, it, it felt kind of strange. Know the industry, know what the job is, know what the company is doing, you're applying for it, show your work, come prepared and uh, prove your passion. Don't show your passion, don't talk about your passion, but actually show it, show that you have a lot of work to show for it. And uh, I guess if you do that, then this part uh, will uh, align more. Michel Maas, I'm creative director at Spill Games. We create uh, casual games in all sorts and Forms, um, but what it means for me or for being uh, a graphic or a graphic artist is that you're really close to the end product. So, uh, at least for uh, Mr. FB, um, uh, creating casual games for a female audience. So, I've seen a lot of work from people, I've talked to a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of Letters, so to speak. Um, and the first thing that I think is the most important one is um, a soft handshake, or at least that's what not to do. I think um, personal presentation is, I think, 50% of uh, being successful when you want to look for a job. And, um, a lot of times. How to present themselves, and that starts with a soft handshake. So um, please um, give people like a good handshake, and um, you're 50% uh, uh, down the road. Um, what I also note uh, is that a lot of people uh, have all sorts of excuses about their uh, portfolio not being up to date on their website. Their laptop died yesterday, and uh, all that sort of things. Um, it's also very important, I think, is to come to come prepared, but also to bring your portfolio. Um, I think that an, an online portfolio will get you in the company, or will get you uh, talking to people in, inside a company. But you also need, I think, just um, a portfolio that you bring along, so you can talk to maybe different people will show different aspects that, that are new to the stuff that you already been showing on the, on the internet. Um, and another thing also very important is that uh, pencil sketches are um, very important as well because they show a lot more than the stuff you do when it gets when it gets um, So. Um, <laughs> These are the things I think that are uh, could help you uh, when you are talking to companies. And, uh, so if you want to look for a, a, a nice job, then uh, please come to me. I give where I can't actually hear myself, so I hope you can all hear me. What happened? My dad presentation crashed. Um, so I'm the studio art director at Guerrilla Games, uh, which I've been doing for I think 15 years now. I have seen so many portfolios in my time. Uh, roughly, I get for just for content art, we're getting something like 400 applications per year. So you must understand that basically things go very, very fast. Uh, we usually review these things with about four people. Uh, and usually basically the only comments that basically somebody gives over a portfolio is just no, nah, blah. Basically you have two people on that list basically say that, basically the rest of the people look at it. So basically it goes very fast. You have a very short moment to make an impression in that regard when you're dealing with a larger team like that, basically with that, which deals with a lot of applications. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is basically how you can get past those 
first 20 seconds, first and foremost. Really roughly 9 out of 10 applicants don't even make it to the interview stage, so basically your portfolio is actually everything that matters in that regard. So here's about the portfolio, which I misspelled. Uh, <laughs> again, basically it's not about spelling. <laughs> um, the main thing is basically professional presentation, and that basically breaks down in a couple of simple things. Um, so first of all, basically there's the formats. There's a lot of people basically that like to impress by putting a complicated website together with flash interfaces and all that kind of stuff. Please don't. Maybe you have to realize maybe that a lot of us actually look at your portfolios on our phones and on our tablets and those sort of things. Basically, if it gets too complicated, we're just basically going to skip it altogether. So just keep it simple. Basically, our favorite format is things like Carbon Mate, cookie cutter portfolios, really simple to use. People know how to understand that. Basically, they can go through them very quickly. Okay. So keep that in mind, basically make it easy for the people basically that need to review it. If, if it's an interface that are familiar with it, they're going to basically be finding your stuff quicker. <clears throat> Second of all, um, keep it accessible. Uh, avoid the following things. Portfolios that are on Mediafire or on Dropbox or other sort of file sharing stuff. Like, I don't want to install a piece of software or be part of a social network to look at your portfolio. Also no RARs. By the time I downloaded your RAR and I've decompressed it, basically I'm doing something else. Basically, I've forgotten that the portfolio is even on my D drive somewhere. No downloadable movies. Basically, it takes time. Same thing. I basically I lose them. No AVI formats. Basically, there are literally thousands of them, and none of them work. But if you have a real, just use Vimeo, just use YouTube. Basically, these are things basically that are easy and accessible, and will make it easy to get past that 20 seconds. If people basically have to download movies. They're gone. And also, basically, this is a big one. No blogs. I hate it basically that if I'm looking at somebody's portfolio, it feels like I'm looking through their diary. I've got months there and days at the end of things, and basically it's a, it's a whole puzzle to just basically get to their work. Keep it very simple. So that's the other thing, basically keep it short as well. Uh, I've seen a lot of overloading portfolios with hundreds of images, with every single asset that people ever created on there, every single prop, every single line drawing. The best thing is basically keep it to about 20 to 25 pieces, and that's already a lot. And basically within that, basically make sure that this is only your very, your very, very strongest work. Because your portfolio is only as good as your strongest work and it's as weak as your weakest work. If people basically pick up the weakest stuff, again, basically the portfolio is out. If something is there, basically it's very strong, they'll gravitate towards it. And in that regard, basically you have to be really, really critical about your stuff. Because basically one of our favorite questions to ask during the interview is basically, what is your weakest part, part of your portfolio and why did you put it in there? So you better have a good question why you basically left that in there. <coughs> um, also, basically keep it relevant. You should know what function you're applying to. Basically we take great care in describing the job requirements and putting that together and putting it on our website. Four or five art directors look at that and basically meticulously go over to see if it exactly has the right tone and the right requirements. So if you put your portfolio forward, make sure that it matches what they're looking for. Make sure that basically that's what's in there is what's relevant to the job. So if it's an application for an environment artist, show environments. Don't show us props, props or characters. The same thing for concept artists. Keep it relevant to what we're doing and what we're looking for. Uh, basically, also remove any doodles. Um, Michelle mentioned basically line drawings. Line drawing, people basically just basically go to the next portfolio. We're, basically, we're not really that interested in your tryouts. We're interested in basically what you can really make. So your first ZBrush model of an alien head, just take that out of your portfolio basically because it just weakens everything else. Uh, your first walk cycle that you ever animated, take it out. Your first character rig, all these sort of things basically that aren't clearly part of basically what the job requirement is, just leave them out. So no pencil sketches, no nature photography, no fan fiction, just remove all of that stuff. So once we've actually looked at your portfolio and we didn't just basically immediately say no, uh, basically, we start looking at your resume. Actually, only then do we look at your resume. In some cases, basically, we just skip through portfolios from people that even come from Blizzard or Valve or, or whatever company, and we might pick basically a very junior guy because simply the portfolio is better. We haven't even looked at the resume yet. So again, basically, on the resume, it's about professional communication, first and foremost. So again, keep it simple. Uh, unless you're a really good graphic designer, which is unlikely because you're trying to become a game artist, just keep it very simple and sober. Don't make a garish, over-designed website for your portfolio. Again, carbon made, standard cookie cutter cut formats. They're maybe sober and simple and not very original, but they're very effective in communicating what your work is. 
So also no fancy fonts, no over the top design. And make sure that somebody proofreads your resume. You've seen maybe think that Dimmer showed with all the maybe faults and typos and that sort of stuff. We never mind a couple of typos, basically half of the people that we have are dyslectic anyway, so basically that's not necessarily what we're looking for, but if the whole thing becomes this giant puzzle of trying to figure out what ex actually you're trying to say, then that's a different matter, we're going to very quickly give up on it. Then there's structure, basically there is a format to resumes that is there because they're easy to access, people take one glance and they know what they're looking for. So when you're doing these things, and especially if it's just most of your students, so you don't have a chronology of the titles that you worked on, but if you do, make sure it's there, make sure that it's in order. Your last project first, the one that you did, did first in your life basically last. Leave all the non-essential stuff out there, like you know, pet projects or those sort of things that shouldn't be on your resume. And basically, after we looked at your portfolio, this is the thing that we're going to be scrutinizing very, very heavily. Uh, you know, there are deadly sins in, in a chronology like that. Uh, any resume that reads like a job popper, one, two years, basically you're at the next company, we're gonna get suspicious. Either you're really shit at your job, you get fired all the time, or you have no job loyalty. So basically, those are sort of things that we're looking for. And then those are, of course, the worst offense, because we look up the titles that people have worked on, we look at their release dates, and basically, we're gonna basically be comparing that, basically, what your track record was. If you leave in the middle of crunch, you're done, pretty much for the rest of your career. Because nobody basically thinks you're employable anymore. It's sort of basically the, the biggest deadly sense that you can do in game development. <coughs> Sorry, I'm talking, talking too fast. <laughs> um, also, indeed, basically keep it relevant. Avoid anything that's not important. Don't give us long letters of explanation of why you wanted to be in game design. Everybody that applies wants to be in game design. Everybody liked playing NES games as their kids when they were kids. It's not really that relevant. Basically. We don't really want to know about, about the stuff. We just basically want to know basically what you're good at and what, you, what your work is like. Then you get to the interview stage. And this is actually probably the most important one. Basically, nine out of 10 applicants don't get there. But the first thing basically is that you need to be prepared, very prepared. So ask the HR department that you're dealing with who will be interviewing you. Basically, look up their name, look them up on LinkedIn, Google them, see what they've done see where they've worked, basically see what titles they've worked on. Because these people basically will be asking you questions. It's good to basically have questions for them in return. Um, then research the company, its history, look at GDC talks that they've given, look at the titles, go learn about those titles, play the titles that they've made. Um, then there's be specific. There's a sort of fatal answer to a deadly question in our interviews, and that is basically, what sort of work do you like to do and what don't you like to do? If you don't have an answer to that and you'll go like, oh, I like everything, you're making our jobs really hard. Because basically we're trying to kind of figure out what you do and what you're good at. If you're just basically going, oh, I like everything, it sounds like you're trying to be accommodating. I'll, I'll do anything, I'm desperate. But it doesn't be like that. What you're actually try doing there is basically you're trying to get your job interviewer to figure out what your career needs to be. And that's not his job. That's your own job. So know what you want and basically be honest about it. Don't just say basically that you like to do everything, although you hate you being characters, for example, or hate certain tasks. You just basically tell them what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Vagueness is just really annoying in that regard. And the last one, basically, this is probably the most important one when you're actually in an on-site interview. Be yourself. Um, because you're now really close to the finishing line and we pretty much know the facts and the figures, the titles that you worked on. We know a lot about your work already. But basically the on-site interview is not really about that anymore. It's really more like a date. At this point, basically, we're trying to figure out what sort of person you are. You know, are you actually an idiot secretly and we haven't seen it yet? Are you an asshole? Do you get into fights with lots of people? Are you argumentative and annoying? Uh, will you get onto people's nerves, basically, very quickly? Because that could happen. Because we want to know at this point, basically, if you're smart and if you're funny, if you can learn fast, if you have interesting ideas, and if you have, can have a decent conversation. Because basically, at this point in time, we're trying to figure out whether we're going to put up with you sitting in the same room with us for the next five years of a project. And that's going to be really important for us because we like to like the people that we work with. So that's it very quickly. Thank you. So, uh, So there's a there's clearly a difference. You are ten games on cash and games. Um, I just think I think 
to make it clear, serious games, casual games, same games.
my portfolio. Uh, uh, thought it was interesting enough to, uh, to invite me to the ring. What are the kind of questions? What is the most important? My, my first question is always, why do you want to work at my company? Because, uh, especially because I have a lot of people who just need to do an internship. Uh, I need people who really know what we're doing. And we don't do concept art. And we don't do a lot of 3D uh, graphics and animation. So I want to know why they want to apply and what we do. We are kind of a, sp a specific kind of game company with a lot of serious games. So if you think we just going to make some fun games or uh, if you were a shooter, I don't understand what you do. I, I always want to know that they're really invested into uh, doing some research. And uh, yeah, that's my first question. to uh, keep it really casual. Uh, what, I, what I find, what I think is most interesting about uh, I like to, to understand how people are thinking. There's a lot of people in my line of work. It's very important that uh, people are really close to their mother. And uh, for me, it's very really useful that people explain why they are doing what they are doing and explain what I think their work is important. It also gives me some insight on how people see their own development, how I, I, how I can help them uh, and let them grow as a So that's why I uh, use a little bit more of my time to see how people react to just simple questions about it can be something like, what's your favorite movie? Or, uh, why, uh, why did, did you do what you do? It, it, it totally depends also on the balance. It, it also depends on, on the, the, the people you get from the audience. Sometimes they give you a soft handshake. And you feel like... Soft handshake is really hard. Yeah, because... Well, most of the time, it's the first uh, impression that you have. And most of the times, I get the impression that before I uh, start talking to this man, I already think like, this is not going to work. So what, what are the questions? Um, we usually like to test them on their critical thinking. Um, so we go something like, okay, well, you want to be an environment artist? Uh, after the kill zone. Say like, oh yeah, I love Kills Island, I've played through it twice. And then usually the next question is basically, what was your least favorite level and how would you improve it? Because basically for us it's really important basically that you have like, okay, here's a guy that can copy your style, and basically can he actually improve it, can he add something to it? We're very critical of our games, uh, you know, basically when we're done with them, we hate to add things. Because they don't, we see all the blocks and flaws and things that we would still like to do with them. We expect basically that other people can basically kind of analyze things like that as well. So for us it's really important basically that people can sort of separate them and basically step aside from the niceties and the politeness about how we love your games and basically kind of help us define how we can improve it. Do you have, I know, the final question is a few points. Strangely enough, we have a simple one that always puts people off and we don't know why. And it's simply basically, what were your top three games in the last decade? And there are a lot of people basically who can't answer that. Basically, they're completely flabbergasted. They're like, oh, I have never thought about that. It's like, you're making games and you don't know what your top three games are. Uh, and it's sometimes surprising. But yeah, basically, if people basically just falter and babble, it's like, Somebody like 
speaks their mind freely. He's trying to be gentle with the possibility that you might be the artist. So that, that really gives some interesting conversations sometimes. I always uh, ask them if they like to cook. <laughs> And I, I try to explain it because I think the analogy of the metaphor of cooking, where you have to think about your target audience and whether it's a, you know it's just a small snack or a midday night snack or a full dinner or uh, what does it look like? How, how do you deal with all those different kind of design elements? Uh, I know not everybody who's a good designer likes to cook, but I always try to get into that metaphor and see whether they are able to think on that level about what they're actually making and for who they're making. So did you ever uh, um, <laughs> I hear this. Uh, did you ever took a chance or something? Some of the work like yeah maybe. Yeah, maybe it was like I'm not quite sure but what the hell is going work? Just maybe you don't know how somebody's going to perform. Uh, some of our leads are well, have been people like that. But we uh, basically started out where we were like, exactly this going to work, and ultimately they turn out to be brilliant and they can lead companies. You, you don't really know in advance maybe how somebody's going to flourish within an environment okay. or certain circumstances, right? Somebody might be really good in the beginning, but when crunch time comes, it's just they fall today. Thank you. 
really does not really matter if you're like educated or not, if you have like an art background. Because the best people that I meet in the industry are mostly who draw really well, but so even without. How much they can do in that regard. Um, well, ideally, when we only apply for a job, maybe two or three times in your life. Uh, probably the first thing that you do is right out of school. We generally don't really hire a lot of people right out of school, but we, almost everybody that we hired right out of school was part of an extensive uh, internship basically before that, and maybe that's what we prefer a lot more. We, we like to get to know these people very intensely before basically we consider hiring them. So I'm not really sure basically how much it would help to really train people in setting up a portfolio. I think the best thing is there that people just kind of self-teach themselves. Basically, there are so many portfolio websites out there that you can sniff through and browse through. You basically see basically what you think looks professional and looks good, and basically what you think is of good standards, and basically learn from that. All right. Back up. Sorry? Back up. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll just keep on babbling. If there's uh, questions from the audience, please raise your hand. Uh, we'll <laughs> Do I see hands? Do I? I'm not quite sure. Yes. So we just put a whole panel against it. Um, have you guys ever seen the portfolio for writing? And how did you judge those portfolio? Sorry, what? The portfolio for writing. So uh, story of I don't uh, use writers, so I don't get a lot of, I don't even have a lot of them. No. I, I've seen them, but I've never had to go with one. Alright. Okay, I guess uh, thank you for the information. <laughs> ah, yeah, all the way in the back, of course.